please stand for the reading of God's word. Be from Isaiah 53, verse 12. And I will be, begin reading at verse 10 for context. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When you make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant shall justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Let's pray. O Lord, we thank you for what you have done for this great salvation, and particularly for this passage in Isaiah that talks about both the sufferings of the Lord Jesus and also his triumph. Help us to see him this day as your word is taught. And we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Well, this last verse of Isaiah 53 is the end of Isaiah 53, uh, and that is the end of one of the most remarkable passages in the Bible, one of the servant songs that talks about the Lord Jesus as a suffering servant. And verse 12 focuses on the victory that he has won, his triumph. The Lord Jesus triumphed on the cross when he crushed Satan's head, and he is triumphing throughout history, and one day he will completely triumph over all of his enemies at the end of history when he returns. But this passage tells us two things about Christ's triumph. It talks about how Christ triumphs and why Christ triumphs. So how does Christ triumph? That's what the first part of verse 12 speaks about. It says this, Therefore I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Now these are the words of God the Father speaking to God the Son. The word divide a portion means to allot a piece or portion, or you can think of handing out or giving, giving something out. The word great is actually the same Hebrew word that is translated as many in the rest of Isaiah 53. And so this, this translation in the New King James is actually not as clear or as good as it could be. So listen to another translation of this verse uh, that brings out the meaning better, and that's by the Old Testament scholar Alec Motier. This is how he translates verse 12. I will apportion to him the many, and the strong he will apportion as spoil. That is that saying that the Father is saying, I am going to give to the Son, give to Jesus, the many, give them at to be his own, to be his spoil, or really his own people. But the question is, who are the many? Well, Isaiah 53 tells us who the many are. Verse 11 says that Jesus is the one who justifies the many. And verse 12 says that he bears the sin of the many. So the many are all of God's elect chosen people, those whom the Father has chosen for salvation and the Son has redeemed and the Spirit is sanctifies. So the Father gives to the Son people. He gives him the many, the people that he has chosen to give him. And that's, Jesus explains, talks more about this in John chapter 6, verses 37 through 39. And he said this, All that the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I will by no means cast out. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that of all he has given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up at the last day. And this is the will of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life, 
and I will raise him up at the last day. So all that the Father will gives the Son will come to the Son, and he will and those are the people that believe in the Son, and those people he will keep and will raise up at the last day. And notice that the Bible calls all of these people that God will redeem, the call, Bible calls them the many. It doesn't call them the few. And that's because they are a many, a great multitude. Revelation 7 tells us that the many are a great multitude of all nations, tribes, peoples, and tongues. In Psalm 2, uh, there's an, is another passage where the Father is speaking to the Son, and there it says, Ask of me, and I will give you the nations for your inheritance, and the ends of the earth for your possession. Jesus will receive the nations as his own inheritance, and it's on that basis that we have been commanded to in the Great Commission to go and make disciples of all nations. Jesus is the one with all authority in heaven and on earth. And he is the one who has the power to deliver and to rescue the many, to rescue people from the grasp of sin and Satan. And that's what he's come to do. He said this in Luke 11. This is how he described his ministry. He was being accused by the Pharisees of casting out demons by, by Beelzebub. But he said, he, in rebuking and refuting that charge, he said, if I cast out demons with the finger of God, and the, in Matthew 12, the cross, cross reference to this uh, in Luke 11 says the spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man, fully armed, guards his own palace, his goods are in peace. But when a stronger than he comes upon him and overcomes him, he takes from him all his armor in which he trusted and divides his spoils. If I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, this is the parallel passage in Matthew 12, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. Or how can one enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods? Unless he first binds the strong man, then he will plunder his house. Notice that what Jesus said is, is saying is that he, by the Spirit of God, came to cast out demons, is, has bound Satan, who's the strong man, and now he is plundering his house. He's taking what people that were in bondage to Satan and delivering them and taking them as his own people. As his own spoil. That's the same thing that uh, this passage in Isaiah 53 is talking about. That's what Jesus has come to do. And so, if you are here today and you are in bondage to sin and to Satan, Jesus is able to rescue you from Satan's grasp and from sin's grasp if you will put your trust in him. So, the first part of verse 12 talks about how Christ will triumph. He triumphs by delivering the many, delivering a great multitude, delivering those in bondage to sin and Satan, and delivering people from Satan's grasp and making them his very own people, who someday will be holy just as he is holy. But not only will Christ triumph, and this passage explains how, but it also tells us why Christ will triumph. And that's what the second part of verse 12 talks about. Because he poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Christ will triumph because he is almighty and because his work is all sufficient. He poured out his soul to death. He died in the place of sinners on the cross as a substitute for sinners, and he was numbered with the transgressors. That means that he was legally counted and punished as a transgressor. And he bore the sins of transgressors. And it is on that basis that transgressors like us can be forgiven. Hebrews 10 describes the results of, of what Christ accomplished by his sacrificial death on the cross. And it says this. Every priest stands ministering daily and offering repeatedly the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. 
But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God from that time, waiting till his enemies are made his footstool. For by one offering, he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. Jesus not only offered that perfect, all-sufficient sacrifice for transgressors on the cross, he also makes intercession for the transgressors, and he does so now in heaven. Verse 12 mentioned that, but Hebrews 7.25 says that same thing this way. He is also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. Jesus came to save completely all those who are in bondage to sin. And of course, those who have been delivered from sin, even though we have been delivered from the power of sin, definitively, we still struggle with sin and fight against it, and it can become discouraging. But the Lord has won the victory, and he will completely deliver his people from all their sins in his time. And he is even now making intercession for us. So Christ will triumph, but why will he triumph? Because his work is all sufficient. He is able to save completely to the uttermost all of those who come to God through him. Christ has triumphed and he will triumph completely, but that leaves a question. And that question is this, how will you respond to his triumph? There are only two responses. You can rebel and resist and fight against Jesus, or you can fall at his feet and trust him as your savior and submit to him as your Lord and King. If you are this day not trusting in him, not submitting to him, then don't come to this table lest you eat and drink judgment. But if you are trusting in him as your savior and submitting to him as your Lord and King, then this table is for you. This table is for those, for sinners who look to him, for those who are struggling with him and look to him to completely deliver us from our sins. So if you are trusting in him, then come to this table in faith. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we praise you that you have triumphed. We praise you that you have bound Satan, the strong man, and you have rescued people and you do rescue people from Satan's grasp, from the bondage and tyranny of, of not only the devil, but of our sins as well. Lord, we thank you, Heavenly Father, that you, for giving the Son a people, giving him us as your people. We thank you for transferring us from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of God, and that that is what you do. And so we pray for those that are still in the grip of Satan and sin, that you would deliver them, that you would free them, and that you would change their hearts, and you would transfer them from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of God. And we pray for those of us here who have been transferred, but are still fighting against sin and, their, and the flesh and Satan, that you would cause us to look to you in faith and give us the victory, trusting in your mighty power, that united with, it's only united with you that we too can trample Satan under our feet. Lord, we thank you so much for bearing our sins and for interceding for us and for saving us, coming to save your people from their sins. Lord, we pray, we thank you for this, and we pray that you would deliver us from all of our sins, and we pray that you would help us to come to this, your table, and that you would nourish us there by your grace, that we would come trusting in you as our Savior, our Lord, and our triumphant King. And it is in Jesus' mighty name and with the help of the Holy Spirit that we pray. Amen.